Dear friends, welcome to Inquest, in-depth analysis and to the point. In this video, let us discuss about second week of September current affairs 2021. And this is part one of the second week. And this activity is useful for your UPSC, KPSC and all other competitive examinations. Now, what is the index of today's discussion? Number one, logistics agreement to be signed soon with Russia. Number two, OS index, Australia and Indian naval exercise. Number three, Namasya app. Number four, center hikes MSP for uh, Rabi crops. Number five, India, Australia to hold two plus two meet. Now let us see the news in details now. First news is in relation to logistics agreement with Russia and it is expected to be signed soon. Now let us see the important purpose or very purpose of this agreement. The agreements are administrative arrangements facilitating access to military facilities. So there will be access to military facilities of either countries. So India can access military facilities of Russia. Similarly, Russia can access the military facilities of India. This is basically for the purpose of exchanging fuel and provisions on mutual agreement, simplifying logistical support. So this is actually to simplify logistical support and increasing operational turnaround of the military when operating away from India. So when the military, uh, which, is, uh, which will be operating away from India, they can gain access to military facilities of Russia for exchange of fuel. Similarly, Russia can also access military facilities for logistical support. Now, who will be the biggest beneficiary? The Navy has been the biggest beneficiary of this agreement of these administrative arrangements signed with several countries, improving operational turnaround and increasing interoperability on high seas with Russia. The reciprocal exchange of logistics agreement is likely to be signed in a month or two. While the one with the UK, so similar kind of an agreement with the UK is in the final stage and should see conclusion very soon. At the same time, negotiations with a few more countries, including Vietnam, are in the preliminary stages of the agreement. India has signed several logistics agreements with all Quad countries, France, Singapore, and South Korea, beginning with the logistics exchange memorandum of agreement it is in short called as LEMO with the USA in the year 2016. So in the year 2016, we signed logistics and exchange memorandum of agreement that is in short co called as LEMO with the United States. And let us know more about LEMO PAC. LEMO stands for logistics exchange memorandum of agreement, a tweaked India specific version of the logistics support agreement, which the US as with several countries, it has close military and two military cooperation. So this is an agreement with the United States. So United States has several you know, countries with such agreement wherever it has military to military cooperation. So it is also one of the three functional agreements as referred by the United States. Now, what does signing LEMOVO mean? LEMOVO gives access to both countries to designated military facilities on either side for the purpose of refueling and replenishment. India and the US already hold large number of joint exercises during which payments are done each time, which is a long and tedious process. So since we have a lot of joint exercises during which the payments are done each time, so that takes a lot of time and tedious process to so to simplify this, so LEMOVO is going to help both the countries. Under the new agreement, a mechanism will be instituted for bookkeeping. So these are the things that will be taken care of under this agreement. One is bookkeeping and the payments and officials who will act as nodal points of con contact will be designated on both sides. So there will be officials and they will be acting as nodal points of contact. So uh, at the designated uh, areas of both the sites. So that will simplify the logistical support for each of the countries. Now, what areas does the agreement actually cover? The agreement will primarily cover four areas. Number one, port calls. Now, what do you mean by port calls? Port calls is nothing but 
stop for a ship on its journey okay so during which the ship is going to be stopped for you know cargo operations like maybe refueling or other activities so that is called as port call so during its journey it will be stopped for the cargo activities then joint exercises training and uh, humanitarian uh, assistance and disaster relief any other requirement has to be agreed upon by both sides on a case by case basis now will this mean stationing of us troops in india no this is not a basing agreement there will be no basing of the us troops or assets on the indian soil this is purely a logistical agreement india can access the string of the us facilities across the globe for logistical support and the us which operates in a big way in asia pacific will benefit from indian facilities now let's move on to the news number 2 so this is an this is a bilateral exercise between two countries aus index so aus australia ind india so this is the joint exercise between these two countries now let us know more about the same what actually uh, participated in this exercise indian navy task group ins shivalik and kadamat has participated in the fourth edition of aus index in september 2021 so this is the fourth edition of aus index which was held in the month of september 2020 2021 and two task groups of navy one is ins shivalik and the other one is kadmat has participated in the event at the same time the royal australian navy in short called as ran anzac class frigate hmas waramunga which participated in exercise malabar along with in units is also a part of the exercise so uh, these uh, things like uh, ran and uh, hmas waramunga which actually participated in malabar uh, exercise will also be part of this os index this edition of os index includes complex surface sub surface and air operations between ships submarines helicopters and long range maritime patrol aircraft of the participating navies the participating indian naval ships one is shivalik and other one is kadmat are the latest indigenously designed so these two are latest indigenously designed indian naval ship so shivalik is guided missile stealth frigate and kadmat is anti submarine covet uh, respectively so these are all the you know two naval ships that parties that are participated in the event they form part of the indian navy's eastern fleet based at visakhapatnam under the eastern naval command so with this let's go to the news number 3 so this is related to ministry of mines mines so there is a uh, development of an app that's called as namasya app now let us know more about this app so this is basically the purpose of this is uh, for uh, providing an innovative platform for supporting msc now let's see this in detail national aluminium company limited that is in short called as nalco or navaratna cpsc that is center public sector enterprises under the ministry of mines has been playing a key role in empowering the micro and small enterprises in short called as msc through providing a modern and innovative platform nalco micro and small enterprises yoga yoga application in short called as namasya a bilingual app developed exclusively for the benefit benefit of the companies msc vendors so this is to benefit the companies micro and small enterprises vendors so this is being developed or under the you know ministry of mines and here the main company that comes into picture is called as nalco that is national aluminium company limited this is a navaratna cpsc navaratna in the sense the companies are categorized into three sections one is navaratna other one is maharatna other one is mini ratna depending on various criteria this nalco comes under navaratna so this is creating an application that will ease the ease of doing business for uh, you know msc micro and small enterprises 
Now let's know more about Namasya app. The Namasya app provides a platform to highlight the company's efforts towards development of MSCs. The app empowers MSCs with required information about vendor registration process, items which can be supplied by them with technical specifications. So they can give the items that they can supply with their specific or technical uh, specifications then vendor development and training programs of Nelco. So Nelco as a responsible corporate and India's leading producer and exporter of alumina and aluminium, the company has taken several initiatives towards easing the process of doing business, especially for the MSC sector involved in mining and metal business and further furthering inclusive growth and sustainable development in its ecosystem. Now let's move to news number four. Amid protests, center hikes MSP for Rabi crops. So we have been seeing or witnessing a lot of protests with respect to three farm bills. So in spite of so many uh, protests or in between such protests, so center has hiked minimum support price for Rabi crops. Now let us understand more about this. The government increased the minimum support price for wheat for the upcoming Robbie season to 2015 rupees per quintal, a 2% hike from 1,975 per quintal rate of last year. At the same time, oil seeds and pulses such as mustard, safflower, and masoor dal saw higher MSP hikes of up to 8% in a bid to encourage crop diversification a statement on the decision of the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs. Now let us understand more about MSP. The MSP is the rate at which the government purchases crops from farmers. So in one line, so it is the rate at which the government purchases crops from the farmers. Currently rates are fixed for 23 crops, including six crops during the upcoming Rabi or winter season for which sowing will begin in the month of October. Now, what is minimum support price with full details? The minimum support price is an agricultural product price set by the central government of India to purchase directly from the farmers. This rate is to safeguard the farmers to a minimum profit for their harvest. So, so this is to give at least minimum profit to them if the open market has lesser price than the cost incurred. So if the cost of the or uh, selling price of the product is less than the, the cost incurred. In the sense, in simple words, the investment that is incurred to produce the uh, you know, agricultural uh, uh, products. The Indian government sets the price for 23 commodities twice a year. Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices, in short called as CACP, set up in 1965 is an export body that recommends the minimum support prices by taking into consideration various factors. So taking into consideration various factors, the Commission for Agricultural and Costs and Prices actually recommends minimum support prices for various, you know, produce. And this was set up in the year 1965. After which the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs will approve the recommendations of CACP. Now, how does this uh, calculation of MSP is done? Since 2009, the Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices fixes the MSP of crops based on number one, cost of production, number two, demand, number three, supply, number four, price fluctuations, number five, market price trends, number six, different costs and international market price, and seven, agricultural wage rate. So based on these seven points, MSP of each produce is going to be fixed. And these are all the 23 commodities. So as I said, there are total 23 commodities. You know, they are covered under MSP mechanism. So you can just pause the video and go through the, you know, crops to which the Indian government is providing MSP. Now let us understand more of uh, Karif crops. Uh, uh, there are uh, three types of crops. One is Karif, other one is Rabi, other one is Zaid. So now minimum support price is given for Rabi crops. You know, India, you know, government of India announced MSP for Rabi crops. At the same time, we'll have to learn what is the difference between 
these three types of crops. So first one, let us understand about Karif crop. Karif crops, so they are, they are also called as mon monsoon crops or autumn crops, which lasts from June to November. So you need to remember the months. So they last between or they are grown between June to November, depending on the area. Monsoon rains may begin as early as May in some parts of Indian uh, subcontinent and crops are generally harvested from the third week of September to October. Rice, maize and cotton are some of the major karif crops in India. Common karif crops. The rice is the most important karif crop of India. It is grown in rain-fed areas with hot and humid climates, especially the eastern and southern parts of India. Rice requires a temperature of 16 to 20 degrees Celsius during the growing season and 18 to 32 degrees Celsius during ripening. It needs rain, rainfall of 150 to 200 centimeters and needs a flooded field during its cultivation. And these are all the various crops of Karif. You can just pause the video and go through the crops. And next, let's learn about Rabi crops. Rabi crops are Rabi harvest or agricultural crops that are sown in winter and harvested in the spring. The opposite of Rabi crops is Karif crops, which is grown after the Rabi and Zaid crop are harvested one after another respectively. Many crops are cultivated in both Karif and Rabi season. The agriculture crops produced in India are seasonal in nature and highly dependent on these two monsoons. And these are all the crops that you can pause the video and uh, have a look at them. And this is also the same, the Rabi crops. And the last one is the Zayed crop. So Zayed crops are summer season crops. They grow for a very long period, mainly from March to June. They require warm and dry weather as major growth period and longer day length for flowering. The Zaid crop season comes between the Rabi and Karif crop. So between Rabi and Karif crop, we have Zaid crops. Some summer months and rainy seasons season is required. These crops are also mature early. In between Rabi and Karif season, there is a short season during the summer months known as Zaid season. Some of the crops produced during Zaid are watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber, bitter gourd, pumpkin, vegetables, and uh, fodder crops. And let's come to the last news. India, Australia to hold two plus two meat. So this is majorly for discussion on bilateral free trade agreement. So let us see the news in details. India and Australia will hold inaugural two plus two ministerial meeting here during the upcoming visit of Foreign Minister Mary Spaini and Minister of Defense Peter Dutton. So what is 2 plus 2? Two? 2 plus 2 is the, you know, two ministers from either side will be meeting on this accord. So one is the Ministry of Defense, other one is the Foreign Minister of both countries. The meeting will be a part of Australia's engagement with regional partners as the minister will also visit Indonesia, South Korea and the US, the US for Indo-Pacific consultations. And these inaugural 2 plus 2 discussions are a cornerstone of the Australia-India Comprehensive Strategic Partnership, which is founded on a shared commitment to a secure, stable, and prosperous Indo-Pacific Indo region. The discussion bet between uh, Paini and her Indian counterpart, S. Jay Shankar, will cover economic issues, cyber security, climate change, critical technology, and uh, supply chain. So these are the areas under discussion between both the countries. India and Australia have been in negotiation over a possible free trade deal, which has so far not yielded any positive results. The ministerial meetings will be held in the backdrop of the evacuation of Western forces from Afghanistan, where Australia had a military presence. So these are all the news of this uh, particular uh, segment. So if you have any questions, you can definitely put in comments box. We will try to answer to your questions. Thanks for watching. Namaskara.